Well then, Bunny. It's time to fart in. Maxwell, no, it is not time to fart in. Okay, <laughs> stop trying to derail my podcast. It is time once again for a light dusting of news that may have escaped your radar, Bunny, since you live under a rock. Yes. It is time once again for you live under a rock. It sounded to me like I said that I, that you lived under I, Iraq. You know, like <laughs> Iraq. I don't want people to think that you're like in the Middle East somewhere, like in a bunker. It's it's really kind of nice here, you know, because like like I, I I didn't know how close to nuclear destruction we got last night, you know, and, oh. and I think I'm better off for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Destruction? Yes, Maxwell. My it's it's. it's Maxwell. It's, it's fine. Maxwell is what I'm gonna say to you because you're a child. It's time once again for the Pope on film. News smatterings. Actually, yes. you have no idea what I'm saying. You can't say something with me if you don't know what I'm going to say. Okay? okay? All right. So I've got bits of news here. Bits of news you may have missed. Uh, there's some news out of the Gulf of Mexico, Bunny. Really? Okay. What happened there? I'm going to tell you the story in two ways. I'm going to tell you the story in the regular way. And then I'm going to tell you the story in a Twitter way. Okay. okay. So so this is this is how this story goes. So there's a species of fish that resides in and around the Gulf of Mexico. It's a species of fish known as the Gulf Corvina. All and right. apparently apparently these fish gather in groups to mate and when they do they produce a mating call. Uh, which at times can be so loud because there are so many of them that are mating together that it can deafen other sea animals. Well, to go to these groups, um, is there like a cover charge? I'm not sure. I think, I, I I think, would think there would be a cover charge. I think you have to wear a, a mask, like Tom Cruise style. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, that's the, the, the story in the regular way. Now, here's the story in Twitter language. Mexican fish orgies are making dolphins deaf. <laughs> That's how I heard it on Twitter. And then it took me a while to be able to translate it in, in Maxwell. You are not a cape. Okay. You, you can get off of me. Thank you. It took me a while to translate it into regular language. But yes. apparently Mexican fish orgies are making dolphins deaf. So fish can be such dicks. Yeah, yeah. Bubble, bubble. There are two different bits of the Pope on Film news smatterings that have recently been stolen by the local morning radio show here in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, those fucks. Uh, we should sue. What they steal? Rick and Brad, 100.5, the cat rocks Oklahoma. Like, I, I wrote these bits, and then, like, four days later, I'm driving to work all tired, and they're like, did you hear this news out of England, out of the Gulf of Mexico? And I'm like, damn it, don't steal my bit. I haven't told Bunny yet. You sons <laughs> of bastards! <laughs> so, um, another bit of news smatterings for you, Bunny. King Richard III, the last English king to have died in battle, he died in the so-called War of the Roses, which, yes. if I'm not mistaken, also featured Kathleen Turner. And wasn't very good. Kathleen Turner, whose last movie role was Dumb and Dumber 2 in 2014. Really? I, I didn't, I didn't yeah. even know that she even did that. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is, what the hell happened to Kathleen Turner? <laughs> Sad. Yes, Maxwell, what? Yes. You can have that. But King Richard, he was killed in a battle, and then he was hastily buried. He was just, oh, my God, he, he died in battle, and we hate him, so let's just bury him in an unmarked grave here. And, and, and uh, there you go. So <laughs> we buried him. Let's forget about King Richard III. So he was lost, his his body was lost for over five centuries 
until in 2012 they accidentally discovered King Richard's bones under a parking lot. Oh, nice. They're working I, I on a parking. It. Yeah, they're working on a parking lot, and all of a sudden, oh snap! I I, I think I found a, a Shakespeare character. <laughs> so now, recently, England has made it official that this rando parking lot is now a protected national monument. Isn't that weird? Okay, nice. Well, and it, and it's still just a garage. They haven't done anything to it. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like a. What are you saying, Maxwell? King Richard the Third. Oh, you found King Richard the Third. Oh, like they found. Yeah, yeah, they found King Richard the Third. Here is another story. Here is another story. Okay. Max, put your shoes away. I didn't mean to burn my popcorn. Uh, here is another story that Rick and Brad morning radio on one hundred point five, the cat stole from me. Right. I was very. I was screaming. I was screaming at, at the radio. I must have seemed like a crazy person, but I was so upset. Hi, Eleanor. So I'm going to talk to you about a surgeon from New Jersey. Okay. His name is Sanjeev Patankar. Okay. He, he has a sitar in his closet. You know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This man is or was... A colon and rectal surgeon. Mm, yeah, how, how does that happen to somebody? I, it's a it's a dream, you know. <laughs> like some kids just grow up and they're collecting their colon and rectal surgeon trading cards and reading oh. reading the colon and rectal surgeon trade magazines, the trade publications, and they're like, "Man, one day yeah. I'll get the big time." Mm -hmm. and make it to East Brunswick. <laughs> All of the good colon and rectal surgeons end up. So Sanjeev Patankar recently had his medical license suspended for very gross and very New Jerseyan reasons. All right, what are these? No offense. Okay. No offense about the very New Jerseyan reasons. So, um... Here you go. So, okay. Now here's the story. This is how they caught him, okay? This is, <laughs> okay. This, That's a good place this to is how start. They, yeah, this is how they caught the man. This is how they went, hey, this is suspicious. So, during some period in time, say like a year, a year and a half, say like two years, Sanjeev Patankar performed 82 surgical procedures And during that time, he only bought five anal catheters. Ooh. Five one-time use only anal catheters. Who would really want to reuse one? Apparently, Sanjeev Patankar would. Really? People were like, huh. And yeah, it turns out that Sanjeev Patankar was reusing one-time disposable anal catheters multiple times in multiple people's rectums. Oh. He would just, he would just. Do, he would just, do fish breed in there? He would just insert the anal catheter and then. He would take out the anal catheter after the surgery was a success or whatever, and then he would look at this one-time use anal catheter and said, ah, I can save this. Then he would wash it, and then he would put it in bleach for a half hour, and then he would wash it again, and then apparently it was ready to enter another person's uh, anal cavity. <laughs> well, who are we to say? I mean, he is a professional. Yeah, yeah. He's a professional colon and rectal surgeon. But anyway, he had his medical license suspended. So, yay! Yay! Um, recently, I-605 in Los Angeles became a bad 80s video game as 20 chickens ended up on the highway. After awesome! A, after a cage fell off the back of a truck. 
And it's like, I imagine that there's some guy who spent like his entire eighties in like an arcade, you know, <laughs> playing arcade games. And now he's like 44 and he feels like he wasted his life. Suddenly there's like 20 chickens darting through traffic. And he's like, this is what I've been training for. <laughs> Sadly, two died. Two of the chickens died. Wouldn't it be amazing if once a chicken died, you just heard do 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 game over. <laughs> Speaking of video games, did you hear about the Call of Duty prank that led police to kill an innocent man? No. Okay, this is a crazy ass story. It it has to do with swatting. Okay. And apparently swatting is an alpha male douchebag gamergate tiki torch sort of prank where a where like that bros do to other bros where you will call police with the purpose of getting the police to send a SWAT team to an innocent person's house. Oh my god, that's fucking sick. Yeah, well apparently according to the FBI um, there are over 400 cases of swatting every year in America. All right. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, apparently you can download software that, that will block the the your the caller ID on your phone and yeah. you just pretend to be like uh oh I'm I'm at this address in uh in Denver, and I'm gonna shoot some bitch, and you get the SWAT team to show up at this address, and it's just some random address you pissed, you picked, or some address of some guy that you hate. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so it it started in Kansas. There are two Call of Duty gamers, and they they hate each other, and they're embroiled in like this rivalry online and in these this web in these chat rooms and they're constantly fighting against each other and and it's something that it's some part of gamer culture i don't know they started doing these bets on each other and one guy lost a bet and the other guy was really pissed about it oh you cheated and so these basically these two guys are arguing about call of duty online <laughs> okay so some ass hat in LA decides to butt in on this uh, on this rivalry, so he, what he does is he looks up what he thinks is one of the guy's addresses. Yeah, and he calls local police in Kansas, saying uh, that he 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 already killed his dad and he's he's lying in a pool of blood on on in the living room, and now I, I'm holding my mother and my sister at gunpoint, and I I've, I've I I might shoot them, but I might not. And I, I need someone to come over here. I also already doused the entire house in a uh, lighter fluid. I might set this house on fire. Here's my address. Okay. So the, the Kansas SWAT team shows up to the address that the guy from LA gave him. Here's the worst part. It's just the wrong address. Okay. Yeah. The guy thinks he got the address of one of the people from the rivalry, but it turns out he just picked the wrong address. He, he so, it, it, like he's not even pranking the right people, mm -hmm. and so the SWAT team ends up at some random in, innocent guy's house, the wrong address. An innocent guy goes out with his hands up, and there's a whole team of people that are just freaked out, expecting that that this is the guy who killed people and held hostage. But this guy's like, I, I'm kind of acting cool and calm because he knows he didn't do anything. Anyway, my pants are falling down. I'm going to pull them up. Okay. And some cop with a itchy trigger finger said, he's reaching for a gun. And they shot him dead. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Just some random innocent guy. So now they they found the guy from L.A. who made the call and now he's in jail. Wow. And it's, all, it's a Call of Duty and, and swatting and yeah, gamer culture. I don't understand that. I don't understand gamer culture. I I I can't. I'll sit down and watch a movie, but I just don't have the time to really be into a video game right now in my life. Yeah. You know, I just don't have you that. Have anymore. Five kids. Hello. <laughs>
Yeah, but yeah, but like um, my entire like all of Natasha's family, a, a large portion of Natasha's family came out for uh, Nana's funeral when Nana died, and one of her brothers came from California. Yeah, and we're having like this little get together at our house, and he's in the corner on his phone, like really excited and animated and yelling, and and finally I'm like, dude, what are you watching on your phone? Oh. I'm watching a live stream of my platoon from Call of Duty. <laughs> and it's like, really? Like, your mom died like three days ago. Like, I don't know. I, I, I guess you have priorities. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine that being me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Here's some, here's I, some I, local. I, I don't get it. Yeah. I, I, just, I just don't get it gamer culture here's some local news for me bunny oklahoma city police are currently looking for a man who robbed a convenience store now get ready for this okay all right no gun no bag of cash he didn't get away with any money this guy stole over four hundred dollars of beef jerky (laughs) Oh man! What by stuffing it down his pants? I I don't know. He 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 came, went into a convenience store in Oklahoma City. He grabbed for over four hundred dollars of beef jerky and ran out. I have so many questions. So How? do I, man. He really likes beef jerky. Yeah. Uh, yes, Bella. Randall keeps on offering Mexican knives. Knives. Mm-hmm. He keeps offering. Randall keeps offering Maxwell yeah. knives. Maybe he's training him to be an assassin. That that's that's good work right now for to be an assassin in this economy. Yeah. 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 That's a good I job. Guess. I'm gonna become a trained assassin. Sweet. I'll be proud of you. You'll be like Crumbopulous Michael. Okay. You'll get it eventually. So I told this story. About um who I am now calling the beef jerky bandit. Okay. I told the story of the beef jerky bandit to Natasha, and we spent a good fifteen minutes working out the math. Okay. She's like, "How how many bags of beef jerky would that be? I mean, beef jerky is pretty expensive already. How much is beef jerky? Let's go to Google." Okay, so beef jerky is this much. So over $400, how many bags would that be? Okay, so we're talking about this many bags. So how could one man get away with this many bags? Okay, let's 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 come up with some theories. Like <laughs> like a ridiculous amount of time. Like did we just spend 15 minutes breaking down the science behind the beef jerky bandit? It sounds like you did. Yeah, like damn it, I'm using math. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So here's some news for you, Bunny. Okay. Um, this this is this was amazing. Apparently, there's a TV station that's called ITV, and on like New Year's Day or some day, some ho- recent holiday where everybody had the day off. I think it was New Year's Day. They scheduled like 9 a.m. Casino Royale film. Okay. And so everybody tunes in, and they're like, oh, man, they're playing Casino Royale. I'm so excited. I'm such a big fan of, uh, what's his name, Daniel Craig. Yeah. And so literally hundreds of thousands of people turned on ITV excited to see Casino Royale. (laughs) And they're like, oh, man, we're playing Casino Royale. I'm so excited. I love this movie. Oh, man, the action sequences and... um. Why is Woody Allen hiccuping? <laughs> um, there's a lot more seals and cowboys and Indians than I remember in this film. <laughs> is that Peter Sellers? What the hell? Yeah, so Casino Royale ended up trending on Twitter. Because people were freaking out expecting to see the big action Casino Royale. Instead, it was... Our Casino Royale. Yes. Well, that serves them right. They should listen to the Pope on film and they wouldn't be making those kinds of mistakes. 
Yeah. I have no sympathy. None. Yeah, people were tweeting like crazy. Wow, Daniel Craig looks a lot older than I thought. <laughs> this isn't a new spattering. This is just something I uh, have come to love. Yeah, Bunny. Bunny. Yes. Netflix audio descriptions. Okay. I take it by your um, vocal font that you have not watched anything with Netflix audio descriptions. No, I have not. Most of the big movies that they have on Netflix have uh, an audio function where it's like, oh, uh, here's this film. You can listen to it in English. You can listen to it dubbed in Spanish. You can listen to it in a couple of different languages. But but it with the major movies, it will say... Uh, audio options and then English and then English dash audio description. And it, what it is, is if you're blind, but you still want to see the film Kung Fu Panda three yeah. in between the dialogue, a, a, a narrator will explain to you what's happening on screen. OK, that's kind of handy. What are these descriptions like? I watched all of the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou mm -hmm. with Netflix audio descriptions. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I it it, it describes literally everything that's happening on screen. <laughs> it, it's almost like stage descriptions. Yeah, are being read throughout the film. I really like them, though, because it, I, I also watched this week's movie with Netflix audio descriptions. And it helped me out because it, suddenly there's this narrator who's explaining, uh, suddenly this character walks by. Oh, this. so that woman's named that. Okay, yeah. thank you. I No, I, I, I'm so confused with all these fucking elves and fucking yeah. fairies and shit. Thank you, Netflix audio description. And occasionally it will give you like a like a bit of a thing you didn't know. Like there was one scene where where it said Ned looked hesitant. Ned put on his Air Kentucky T-shirt and sat on the bed. And I'm like, oh, is he wearing an Air Kentucky T-shirt? I never noticed that. <laughs> Thank you, Netflix audio descriptions. Every once in a while, it'll give you like a little thing like that. You know? Yeah. Like it'll say like uh, like Brigitte smiled hesitantly, and I'm like, oh, I guess she does. I never noticed, never noticed that either. Thank you, magic voice. <laughs> but the next time you watch an audio film, the next time, the next time you watch an audio film, next time you watch like a big movie on Netflix, uh, check the audio function and give it a try. It, it's it's either going to be uh, really cute or it will drive you insane. It drove Natasha insane. <laughs> she's like, and then Emerald comes in and she's like, oh, Jesus Christ. And why are you fucking doing this? <laughs> and I'm like, what? I've grown to like it. I like having a narrator throughout all of my Netflix adventures. It means that we can be that much more detached from reality and uh, don't have to pay nearly as much attention. And how does a blind person even get on Netflix and find the movie he or she wants? That's a good question. Let alone turn on the Netflix audio description. <laughs> but that's that's a different question. Um, so Vince McMahon, this is my last bit of news smatterings. This yes. one came. This one came from Amber. Um, Vince McMahon has recently sold over $100 worth of sh stocks in the WWE. Huh, okay. And then got that $100 million and purchased a company. And through that company, I'm just stating the facts here. And you can come to whatever conclusion you want to, okay? I'm just stating the facts. Okay. That Vince McMahon sold over $100 million of shares in the WWE and used the money that he got from that to purchase a company. And that company is now renewing copyrights for names and brands associated with the XFL. Oh, my God. 
for what? Nostalgic purposes? If you think about it, if you think about it, this might be a work of pure genius. Because what is it, like 1992, 1994, 1999, 19, 1996, 19, it, 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 you know, it's the 90s. And Vince McMahon said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create an alternative to the NFL. And he does this, this like highly masculine, highly aggressive, vaguely sexist, macho, douchebag version of the NFL. Yeah. but. NFL fans are like, but we love the NFL. We don't need an alternative. In fact, we'll always love the NFL. Our love for football will never disappear. (laughs) Nothing will ever cause us to hate the NFL. The ratings will continue to go up. You get out of here, Vince McMahon, with your alternative to the NFL. That will never be something America might want. So now here we are, and it's 2017, 2018, and uh, NFL's ratings are in the shitter, and people are pissed at the NFL. And then it's, it's, you know, NFL fans are literally like, oh, man, I love football, but I hate the NFL. Man, if only there was another option. Nice. Another option. Yeah, I see where you're going. Football. So, like, Vince McMahon's like, oh, shit, I had a thing. <laughs> I had a thing. Let me dust this fucker off. Unfortunately, unfortunately, people have already started to dub it the MAGA FL. Really? Yeah. But but base but basically, if you look back at the XFL, that's basically what it was. Yeah. It was like a it's like a NFL via entourage. Yes. But I gotta say, if the XFL is ever going to be successful ever, now is probably the time. Yes. Indeed. So, uh, yeah. So, more power to you, Vince McMahon. This, this, this might be horrible, but it might be brilliant. <laughs> you know, we'll just have to wait and find out. Yeah. So that's it for the Pope on Film news smatterings for this week. I really like the news smatterings. The news smatterings are fun. 